I, you know, I was at the Boston Globe when the New York Times owned it. The way they treated us was pretty, pretty right. grim. So, I mean, I mean, and, and they owned us. We have a wait. We have a Twitter question. Can I ask you a Twitter question? Uh, because you know we got one, so I think we should we should use it. Uh, this is very pinpoint. What do you think happened with Sean Souter? Can Baltimore policing be quote unquote restored? <laughs> um. It can be, uh, it has to be, but it will be a long road back. As I said, the institutional memory in that department is is vulnerable. Um, if I were the if I were the police commissioner, I would be hiring back not not as sworn officers, but almost as um, uh, as uh, as advisors, as as consultants, uh, the, the retired police who once knew the job, uh, or maybe guys who work for federal agencies that have investigative skill, and I would be planting them in units as non-sworn uh, advisors to start retraining uh, oh. the fundamentals of police work. Um, so that's, I mean, it, look, it, it was a long time building that, this horrifying edifice that the drug work made. It's, you, you know, the journey of a thousand miles, one step, got to do it. What happened to Sean Suter? I'm probably getting one episode ahead of where we are, um, but someone asked and here we are. Uh, it's a, it, if you understand the evidence, if you look at the practicalities, of every single piece of physical evidence, Sean Souter took his own life. It's 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 just there. Um, you know, I, I I don't think we look. You know, as, as filmmakers, we took our responsibilities here very seriously. We looked at everything in the independent review, in the original homicide file. We we looked at all of what what was there. We looked at um, all the physical evidence. But I'll leave I'll leave your listeners or your viewers to, with one thing. If you if you imagine because you're inclined to think the worst of the Baltimore Police Department. And certainly in this mini series, I'm not exactly delivering their best. So I don't have any, I wouldn't be adverse to saying Sean Souter was assassinated by his fellow officers because he was going to testify. But I'll give you two things that just make it fundamentally ridiculous um, to be premised on that. The first is that he, he had been named by other officers who were already indicted in their proffer sessions as having taken money early in his career. And there's no incentive for them to do that. Uh, because they're trying to get a deal. And if they if they screw up, if they say anything in their deal that's not accurate, they could lose what leniency they are being given for their early cooperation. So they have no incentive to name somebody who isn't involved in the earlier corruption. So I think uh, Detective Souter knew that um, the other shoe was about to fall. He, I don't think he was going to be indicted. I think you know, they, they were talking about things that were beyond the statute of limitations. He wasn't targeted in any way. But he was going to lose his job. And that was made clear to him by the federal investigators. So he knew that even before he went into the grand jury. But the second thing is really more telling. If you're, let's, let's imagine the worst, the most dramatic conspiracy theory that, that, is the, um, that, that gets everyone excited. Let's imagine that the, his fellow police officers want to assassinate this man because he's getting ready to testify. Why in hell would you have him out in an alley on a West Baltimore street and fight him for his own gun? It makes no sense. If you want to make it look like you certainly don't want it coming back to you that you assassinated him, and, and, and but but more but it's easy enough to just say he was out on the streets of West Baltimore, which is a dangerous place for a cop, and somebody drove by and shot him. You know, you shoot him, you shoot him twice. You make sure he's dead. You um you take the gun and you th you, you throw it in a, in a um it's it's not it's not a police weapon. You throw it in the um in the sewer and you and you and you're done with it, and let the cops try to solve it. Why would you go into that alley and fight him for his own weapon? He shot with his own weapon. It, it, it was a scenario that from the moment a lot of any intelligent cop, any intelligent investigator heard it said, you know, you could lose that fight. You could end up getting shot yourself. You could end up, uh, you don't know what's going to happen. This is a grown man. You're going to fight him for his weapon with his partner eight seconds away. And, and right. the partner... Yeah. Um, the partner, the partner's story checks out. The partner did what he said he did. So you have this man who um, is shot with his own gun at point blank range, presumably fighting with a suspect. And from there, you get to the idea that that suspect was a cop who was. It's insane. It's an, you know, but we have a capacity to want the most dramatic and um, excitable narrative to prevail. But unfortunately, in 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 doing this mini series. Um, I felt a very fundamental responsibility to follow the facts as they were. And I don't think anybody who looks intelligently at what happened there believes anything other than this, this man had motive 
and he created a circumstance in which he tried to make his own taking of his own life look like a, a death in the line of duty.